continue then covering the first of november local government elections we turn our eyes to the city of cape town to unpack some of the challenges facing that metro i'm joined now by eff western cape chairperson melikaya Kleko, as well as jodine hill lewis he's the da's mayoral candidate as unveiled by the party for the city of cape town gentlemen good evening good to have you with us uh, tonight on in focus let's start right there in that announcement uh, by cocta of the uh, outer, I suppose, date that they have chosen, 1st of November, as opposed to the 27th uh, of October, saying the IEC needs more time. What's your reaction, Melikai? Yeah, no, we, we were anticipating that the, the, IE, uh, the IEC, together with the COCTA minister, would respond as such, uh, because they, there is a court ruling that they should... Uh, uh, arrange elections before the 1st of November. But uh, the only challenge that we are faced with is them trying to review in their plot to, to, to review the election calendar is uh, allowing them to, the ANC and other political parties who fail to register, to, to re-register candidates. That's the only challenge that we are having. Otherwise, the elections were ready for them. We knew that the would be no postponement of elections uh, this year. So we are ready for that. So as a EFF, we are waiting uh, for the election day. We are currently on the ground, working very hard to ensure that our candidates are known and uh, we are taking uh, manifesto inputs from the ground so that the people will tell us what needs to be done by EFF councillors. Now, uh, Jodine, uh, the IEC, of course, opposing the legal bid by the DA uh, to block that um, uh, rescheduling or that amendment of the elections timetable to allow for uh, the candidate list uh, to be resubmitted. What's your uh, reaction first to the 1st of November date, as well as, uh, of course, uh, to uh, those issues around the, the candidates? Well, thank you for having us, and good evening to Melikaya. Uh, we are thrilled with the news that elections will take place on the 1st of November. That's great news. We did not want any postponement to, to February uh, 2022. We are ready to hold these elections. We are ready to campaign. And indeed, we are already campaigning across Cape Town in every community. We are on the ground and running. Uh, and we are ready to secure Cape Town's future and do much more from, for Cape Town. Uh, of course, the one aspect that we still do strongly oppose, as you said in your introduction, is the bid by the IEC to reopen the window for, uh, for political parties to submit their candidate lists. The fact is that there was a clear deadline to submit your candidate lists. And if you, if you want to run the country and run municipalities, then the very least that voters should be able to expect from you is that you can submit your lists on time. So those parties that did not get their lists on time, most notably the ANC, uh, well, sorry, tough luck. The IEC cannot reopen the lists now, and we will absolutely oppose that. There can be no special treatment or special favors for the ANC. Uh, other parties who have submitted their lists late in the past have been excluded from elections, plain and simple. And exactly the same should happen to them. Yeah. There can be no special favors for the ANC. Should the registration uh, be open for candidates who will only be registering to vote on the 18th of September? Yes, I think that is the one point. I haven't seen the DA's court papers, but that's, but to me, rationally, that makes sense to say that if someone has only just now registered to vote uh, and they have not previously been a registered voter, then... Uh, then they should be allowed to stand as a candidate. But let me say that it would be very strange for a political party to uh, run as a candidate someone who has never been a voter in that municipality. That would be very, very strange. So it, it should apply to a tiny handful of candidates across the country, uh, you know, probably single digits. Uh, and so it does not apply to the many hundreds and hundreds of candidates around the country that the ANC has failed to submit on time. But let's get in then on uh, the questions around the city. Fairly good uh, if you look at uh, some of the reports from the Auditor General. Is the city uh, in financial management? The uh, city of Cape Town certainly looked at as one of those that does certainly well as far as that 
is concerned. However, broadly speaking, if you look still uh, at uh, the spread of resources, uh, it appears and paints a picture of a paradise for a minority, but certainly not for uh, the poorest of the poor, where uh, delivery is still pretty slow. 570,000 um, uh, informal settlements, about 13.5% uh, is the latest number that I am uh, looking at. And a number of them, uh, Jodine, at this particular point, uh, raising issues, for example, uh, of uh, sanitation. If you look at Burundi, the east section, Mizamoyetu, Deep Street, Iraq, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, no rest. They're saying they literally have no toilets whatsoever at this particular point. Uh, what, what is the strategy around addressing those issues? Well, thank you for that question. I think that's an important question. I, I want to make sure that every single resident in Cape Town can see and feel the DA difference. We know that it's not just on financial management. Yes, the, the DA uh, and the city of Cape Town is already the best run government in the country financially. Uh, but also on every objective measure of service delivery, residents get the best deal from the DA in Cape Town. But that does not mean that there is still a, not a lot more work to be done in a lot of communities. Every person must see the DA difference and they must have access to the services needed to live a life of dignity. And so part of what inspired me to run is this, this deep commitment to make sure that the areas where I worked in uh, previously in my career in the very poorest parts of the city around Philippi and the southeast of the city get the services that they need, uh, all of the services they need and more than they already have to live a life of dignity. I think that is important. It requires additional uh, investment in infrastructure, basic infrastructure, particularly, as you said, uh, sanitation and sewerage infrastructure. Some parts of the city that's very difficult to do because of the water table. We know the engineering challenges, but uh, new solutions can be found and new innovations can be explored to give more people the services they need for access to dignity. Nilikaya, why would uh, the people of the city of Cape Town want to change an administration that has managed their finances fairly good? Not only that, but has performed uh, well on all the other uh, uh, indexes as well. I mean, if you look at, uh, for example, unemployment, Statistics South Africa's quarterly labor force survey say it's the lowest unemployment rate uh, uh, as far as provinces are concerned in the whole country. Uh, to be honest, uh, Tabo, uh, the DA really is prepared to return the money to Treasury in each and every financial year, which is a serious challenge for us. Uh, lucky enough, uh, Justin is uh, referring to Philippi as one of the areas where he was working. Mm -hmm. If you can go now to Philippi in the area of Flay, those streets are still flooding with water. There's no poor, there's poor drainage system there. And if you can go to Philippine now, you would find in the area of Brown's Farm, you cannot enter there. There is no proper lighting there where uh, most of our people are being hijacked and the women are being killed. And it is a slaughter area. If Philippi, you go to Delft, it's a slaughter area. And Fulane is the same. If you go to Cryfontein now, the people of the new uh, informal settlement still do not have access to water. A mere erecting of water tanks and even temporary toilets whilst there is no sanitation services that are being served. So for the Democratic Alliance to claim that they are a clean government, yes, they are clean because they don't do anything with their money. They return it without having service, the black people uh, of Western Cape and in particular in the metro. If you go to Kailicha now, you will find serious challenges of all the informal settlement, including the formal settlement in Kuguleitu, an old formal settlement of Cape Town. There was serious flooding now, the poor drainage system. Eh, the city of Cape Town knew there is going to be floods in each and every year. And they are doing nothing to clean the, the, the drains in uh, the formal settlement. I'm talking about formal settlement. I'm not talking about the likes of Kosovo and other areas where we would know that there would be fires, there would be flooding and everything else. Yeah. So the uh, city of Cape Town is really doing very well for the rich and is doing nothing for the poor. The people of uh, Danun, they are uh, a known poverty-stricken area. On a yearly basis, uh, our people are flooding there. They get burned by, uh, their shakes get burned by fires every time in winter. 
And even in summer, and the city of Cape Town is not doing anything about that. Right. Even the integrated settlement plan of the city of Cape Town is currently evicting people in each and every suburban area. Yes. And then we, as the EFF, we had to come to the party to come and intervene with that. Our people should uh, vote with their conscience now going forward and stop uh, taking food parcels from the Democratic Alliance and loaves of bread. We're coming back in a moment, and Jordine, you'll respond to that and, of course, uh, speak a little bit more in depth around the issue of uh, uh, homelessness uh, as well as um, uh, human settlement challenges uh, in the city of Cape Town. Melika Taiko Jefferson of uh, the EFF in the Western Cape and DA Merrill candidate uh, Jodine Hill Lewis on In Focus when we continue. Welcome back. You're live tonight uh, with us on In Focus, and uh, we look in at local government uh, and uh, what are the interventions and plans in place uh, for the mayoral candidates coming into the city of Cape Town. Melikaya Clerko, chairperson of the EFF in the Western Cape, and DA mayoral candidate Jodine Hill Lewis. Jodine, since 2009, right, uh, when the DA uh, pretty much took over the, the Western Cape, why has it been so difficult to? Uh, address the sanitation challenges of Kailicha, for example. I and mean, if you look at the poo protest, then it tells you that there is really slow delivery when it comes to sanitation. It's not always that there's slow delivery, Tabo. And it's so great that, that Melikaya knows Philippi well. I'd love to go and visit uh, him there or with him there and, and uh, look at what some of the things that the city has done there because I know that part of the city very well. There are large parts of the city that are uh, wetlands during winter, and that's why that part of Philippi that he refers to is actually called flay, because it is a flay. And, and in winter, it is absolutely waterlogged, and it is impossible to install sanit underground sanitation pipes in areas like that. So you've got to make other plans by installing sanitation uh, on the boundaries around those areas, where people can, will still have to walk some way. So there are serious public policy challenges. It's not just a simple matter of, uh, of overnight delivery. And I've seen personally how uh, the city has installed massive water pumps to try and pump water out of there during the winter months. And I'm happy to go there with Melikaya to see those in play. I know there's a water pump, there's a permanent water pump there that, that tries to pump water out I hope, it's, I hope it's still functioning. I know that there was the installation of high-mast lighting in Brown's Farm because I oversaw that installation myself and pushed very hard for it. So it's not that there is uh, nothing happening, Tabo. There is a huge amount. But I do, uh, again, I, I come back to the point that I made. I absolutely want to make sure that every resident of Cape Town has the services that they need to live a life of dignity. And that means we've got to do even more in those areas than is already being done. And where there are uh, innovative engineering solutions, let's explore those. Let's get that done. Let's, let's try to do more to give those residents what they need. Because, of course, it is not acceptable for anyone to live like that, and, the, and no one should have to live like that. And every one of us should work harder to make sure that they have the services uh, they need for dignity. In 2020, some civil society organizations um, uh, and uh, some agencies uh, doing a calculation, you have now 14,000 homeless people uh, in the city of Cape Town, if I'm correct. The criticism is um, you're spending millions on law enforcement. In fact, a figure of 335 million being branded about and punitive measures against the homeless instead of addressing that situation. Look, it's, it's, it's a very, very complex and difficult problem to simply address. It, it combines matters of substance abuse, of poverty, of unemployment, sometimes undiagnosed uh, mental illness. But I think that uh, here the, the city has what are called safe spaces, which currently provide space for about 500 homeless people. And I'd really like to investigate expanding those uh, significantly to provide more safe spaces for homeless people to sleep warmly and safely and have access to, to basic services and to do more to help people get off the streets. I think all of us should agree that it is not a healthy, dignified, safe, a hygienic long-term situation for anyone to be living on the streets and we, we should be helping to, to, to get them off the streets over time. I also just want to say something about, about housing because, of course, housing and homelessness are, are inextricably linked. 
And I think there is a lot the city can do more to unlock uh, public pieces or uh, pieces of publicly owned land for foster housing delivery by the private sector. And I'd like to play a role in trying to make sure that that happens. Are you going to take a different route to your current mayor there, uh, where you just want to call the police and throw them behind a van and lock them up? Well, I think, the, I think the difference is going to come in making sure that those safe spaces can accommodate them. A, 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 a combination of those safe spaces and, of course, homeless shelters, uh, so that there is a place for homeless people to go. Uh, again, we, we, I agree that they should not, homeless people should not live uh, for extended periods of time on the street. It is not hygienic, it's not safe, it's not dignified. So we've got to figure out a way, and it might mean the city spending extra money and biting the bullet to expand those facilities, but then that's the right thing to do if it means uh, that we can uh, play some role and make some progress towards solving this, this, uh, this issue. Okay, Melika, respond to those uh, issues. One is that Philippi is a wetland and very difficult there to put sanitation. You have to find out uh, some uh, creative, innovative ways. Maybe you can share what are the innovative ways the EFF will take to addressing that sanitation question, but also homelessness uh, in the city. How are you going to respond to it? Uh, it's uh, very clear. The issue of the expropriation of land without compensation. There is enough uh, stretches and pieces of land around the city of Cape Town where you must check the, all those uh, informal settlements. Is that it was uh, started as a temporary measure where people uh, had to be innovative to house themselves when the city of Cape Town failed to house them. And then there is enough land in the, around the city of Cape Town where our people could be placed in uh, proper uh, arrangements of government and ensure that they do not experience those kind of challenges that they face in each and every winter and every summer, for that matter, where there is challenges of fires and as well as floods. So the city of Cape, there are people staying currently on a railway line around the Philippi area, and the, the city of Cape Town is not doing anything to prioritize them so that our railway lines could be able to, to, to function. Those are the people that we need to prioritize in ensuring because they are homeless. They are equally to those that are homeless because they are in areas that are very much dangerous for them to be there. But the approach that is utilized by the city of Cape Town is a police tactic of bringing law enforcement and just demolish their houses without giving them alternative placement. There is enough uh, uh, accommodation around the city center where our people tried to Occupy and they were e evicted. The area in the uh, uh, Salt River, where our people, they've seen that there is an abandoned uh, building there of government that belongs to the city of Cape Town. When they e e invaded that uh, uh, building, the city of Cape Town was the first leading that uh, 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 eviction process of those people. There's a number of uh, areas such as uh, Brooklyn, where there is uh, state uh, accommodation that is administered by uh, a company called the, uh, uh, what is the name of this company now again, uh, that, that is uh, administering all city of Cape Town's properties. And then in the process, then instead of the city of Cape Town intervention to assist our people, what they have done is the eviction of the people in all those uh, buildings. So there is no integrated settlement plan, and then our people are utilizing every piece of land where they find to occupy. So as the EFF will expropriate land without compensation and see to it that our people are placed in better uh, uh, areas of... So, Melikaya, as uh, the EFF administration, you're saying there will be no evictions? Never. We'll never evict our people. What we'll do, we'll place them in uh, alternative placement. We will never evict them and throw them into prison and uh, destroy their property, their last pieces of property that they have, uh, uh, that like the DA is doing. The prisons are full. Look now, they are currently jailing uh, the, 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 the homeless. Those people are not even able to pay the fines that the city is imposing. So which means, therefore, that it's just a kind of a cat and mouse that they are playing with our people without uh, having an objective uh, uh, view of how our people are supposed to be treated. It's a very horrific experience that we are uh, experiencing under a so-called caring city. Quick one, Jodine. Now we have a minute. Um, water demands predicted to be 
uh, in fact, uh, to outstrip the current supply, according to Nature Conservancy. And uh, the city's over-reliance on surface water. Have you got some innovation? What is the new approach? Sure. Just in a minute, I just want to respond. The, 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 the offer is now, the choice to the voters is now very clear. Melikaya has said there will be expropriation without compensation in Cape Town if he is elected mayor. Let me tell you, there will never be expropriation without compensation in Cape Town so long as the DA is elected to govern in the city. We will fight against it. We will stop it. So that is, the, there could not be a clearer choice to the voters, uh, and I know which way Cape Town will choose. I don't think very many people agree with Melikaya on that offer. On water, we absolutely have got to make sure that Cape Town is more resilient to future droughts. We know that the rainfall trends are going in one direction, uh, and that's downwards. This place is becoming drier and drier over the years. So we've got to invest now before we have another major drought in serious additional water infrastructure. And a lot of that investment has already started, but it does take years to build. Uh, and it, we need to make sure that that infrastructure investment keeps up, uh, keeps pace, so that when that next big drought comes, we are ready and uh, can provide water for all of our residents and, uh, and, and give them the water that they need. Yeah. Melikaya, your solution to the water challenges of the city of Cape Town? The, the reports that uh, come from the very same city of Cape Town that were provided in 2018, uh, 2019, it shows that there is enough water under the surface. There is enough aquifer water in the areas of Philippi and as well going towards the area of Strand. So the city of Cape Town must just uh, provide means to get that water above the surface so that people and the make sure that we we say we save the water so that we uh, our people do not suffer going forward but uh, moreover the, we need to do away with the challenges of water pipe leaks that are happening in the city of Cape Town, especially in urban areas where uh, in the leafy suburbs such as Constantia the, where there is serious water leaks there and in our locations where the city of Cape Town is not doing anything to fix the leaking pipes in our areas so if that, that can be done by a caring city then we would have a proper uh, way of preserving water going forward and we will not experience challenges of water shortages and threatened by zero, uh, day zero kind of arrangement of the democratic alliance. Well, there you are, two parties and their ideas for local government. It's up to you then to make that choice. Gentlemen, we appreciate your time and thank you very much for joining us tonight here on In Focus.